Hi everyone, uh, today in this talk I'll tell you about how we built an end map for cars. So I'll start off with a question. Do you know what's going on in your car? Well, a modern car consists of a network of electronic control units, or ECUs, that talk to each other to handle everything from your engine and brakes to your headlights. Now, as modern cars are starting to include more electronics, more wireless systems, it's starting to become more increasingly important to know what's going on in your car, especially in the context of security. Let's look at a few scenarios. So, t say you take your car to a shady mechanic, and he installs an ECU without your permission. In this case, I would want to know what ECUs are currently in my car. Maybe you buy a aftermarket radio from some guy on, on Craigslist. And that radio is actually transmitting new messages onto the network that you do not expect it to. At this point, I would want to know what devices are sending what messages. And maybe this uh, guy from Craigslist wanted to use that radio to shut down my engine ECU. Using recent work uh, by Cho et al., they've demonstrated, uh, they showed that a compromised ECU that was capable of receiving messages from its victim, in this case the engine ECU, could shut it down by simply sending messages in a particular manner, causing errors in the engine's transmission, and it will shut down. So in this case, we would also want to know what messages can an ECU receive? So, well, we want to build an automotive network mapper. Using, uh, guided by our three scenarios, we uh, have three goals for our network mapper. First, we want to identify the ECUs in a network. Then we want to identify the message sender for each message. And for each message, we also want to know which devices are receiving these, uh, these messages. So because we're building a tool, we have to focus on practicality. Our tool should not require your car to be on for several hours or days at a time. We don't want to use expensive equipment like an oscilloscope. Our, our method should work on the majority of vehicles that are out there, and we shouldn't ask our users to cut directly into the wires of their car. And last, and most importantly, we don't want to brick your car, because that would be the worst thing ever. So the obvious straw man here is why not ask the automaker, right? The automaker has this information in a database file of this message information. However, this is strictly confidential. Even companies that work with the automaker have a, have a tough time getting this information. And you might consider, well, maybe your mechanic might have this information. You can go to an online mechanic subscription, but that only tells you the wiring diagram of these ECUs. And at most, the information you'll get is the number of ECUs in a car. And the reality is, is that the network inside a car is constantly changing. And we've seen three scenarios as to how this can happen. So in a nutshell, uh, we build Canvas, a network mapper for cars that leverages information from message timing and the error handling mechanism to generate a network map in under 30 minutes with less than $50 worth of hardware. So now I'll give you some background about uh, the, the protocol cars use and some challenges in mapping. So the de facto standard for the internal automotive network is the controller area network, or the CAN protocol. Uh, a CAN protocol consists of a bus where each ECU is responsible for sending a set of IDs. These IDs uh, are basically label the data that an ECU is transmitting, but the re so the actual purpose of each ID, we don't know. We, uh, an ID could mean engine timing or vehicle speed, but only the automaker has that information. And each, and each of these IDs are sent periodically, and each ID is only sent by a single ECU in the network. So looking at a particular CAN message, the ID uh, at transmission time serves priority in the network, and will decide which message is sent first. And there's also a process of acknowledgement, where after a message is sent, it will be acknowledged um, simultaneously by the receiving ECUs. Now, unfortunately, this makes uh, the CAN protocol makes mapping hard. If we look at the, if we connect our tool to the network, and this is the information that we get, the IDs and some timestamps of the transmission times. Now, if we look at an individual message, the challenge is, is that this ID only indicates priority, not information about the message sender. And because the ACBIT is sent simultaneously 
we don't know who exactly sent the who exactly received the message. It could be one, it could be all of the ECUs in the car. Now, for those of you familiar with the CAN protocol, you could define receiver differently, and we talk about that at the end. So now let's take a look at the Canvas system. So we combined our first two goals, ECU identification and message sender, into a module called source mapping, and our third goal becomes another module called destination mapping. For source mapping, we take an input, the data log of, of uh, timestamp traffic that we see from the car, and our goal is to produce a source map where we have a table of the ECUs and the set of IDs that they transmit. Now the question here is how can we link these IDs to the source ECU? Let's borrow an insight from prior work. Prior work for purposes of building an intrusion detection system, they identified, a, they identified clock offset as a unique characteristic that could identify ECUs in the car. Now clock offset is basically, um, if your clock is one second behind mine, that's a one, clock, that's a one second clock offset. Um, and by tracking this clock offset, per message ID in the network, sharp changes could indicate an active attack. Now we thought, well, let's repurpose this insight and let's look at a, let's look at a, a single ECU um, from a real vehicle. This ECU has three IDs and all sent at the same period. And by using a graph of clock offset versus the number of the messages in the, in the car, we can clearly see that we can associate and cluster these three IDs into a single source ECU. Make sense? Unfortunately, we found that prior work is not sufficient. Uh, the first problem is that it's not robust to noise in the period, which we find in automotive networks, and because it is period dependent. So an example of this period dependency, another real ECU from a real car, these three IDs are, are transmitted at three different periods. The only conclusion I could properly draw from this graph right here is that there are three different ECUs sending one message each, which is not true. So our solution here is let's figure out um, which messages could help us remove that period dependence. And our insight here is let's choose messages at the hyper period or the least common multiple of the period of, for two different IDs. So here uh, for two IDs that transmit at 18 and six, we'll pick these particular least common multiples. And by tracking this offset using these particular messages, um, if, the, if the offset remains constant, then we know that these two IDs originated from the same ECU. So our approach here is we strip out the input log and just focus on these two IDs, and we measure over time in order to reduce the effect of noise. And we do some clustering by, based off of these matches, and we can group these IDs into sets of ECUs. We also see a lot of practical challenges where we face uh, messages that have deadlines, and messages that suddenly stop transmitting, and we talk about how we solve those challenges in the paper. So now going to destination mapping. The input for destination mapping is the source map, as well as, the, as, well as access to the physical bus um, that all cars in the United States are required to have, the diagnostics port. The output we want to generate here is a destination map, where we have for each ID the set of destination ECUs that are receiving that ID. So if we go back and look at the un, an unmodified, CAN, uh, unmodified CAN bus, when we transmit a message onto the network we do, and we see an act, we don't exactly know who acted the message. But what if we could isolate an ECU to guarantee that the sole device on the network is the only device that's transmitting that act? At that point, we could, we could fill out our destination map. So here we borrow another insight from prior work that was thinking of, that was using this uh, error handling exploit to do to perform a denial of service attack. What they found and pointed out was that in the CANS error handling, if you could cause a certain number of errors, uh, of ECU will voluntarily shut itself off to prevent itself from further uh, harming the network. The thing is, is their method was not robust. And it was designed to be an attack. It only needed one success to be successful. But because we are trying to perform this multiple times, uh, we had to come up with a different approach. And we talk about this in the paper, as long as uh, real limitations, um, including ECUs that auto-recover and other examples. So now we look at our evaluation. So for our evaluation, we have 
two different cars. Um, one is a hand-me-down that the university gave to us. It's a uh, 2009 Toyota Prius. And, be, and we, saw, we thought, oh, okay, well, it's a Prius. Let's get a newer car, right? We went to a salvage yard, and we got a really cheap 2017 Ford Focus. All the electronics are still intact. We also got some, uh, ECU, some ECUs from a junkyard, and we did, all, we did a lot of testing on a synthetic topology using Arduino Dues, um, which is also where we run our Canvas mapper. So just some key takeaways. We built a system that, has, that uh, runs in under 30 minutes. It, has le it uses an Arduino Dewey for less than $50. It uses the standard CAN implementation, and you connect to the onboard diagnostics port of your car. And any of the methods that we do, including isolating an ECU, if you follow the steps in our paper, uh, you won't have any dash lights afterwards. So now let's look at two interesting case studies where we actually, could where we actually saw um, situations of the, of the first three scenarios I gave you. So in this example, we are looking at the source map of a, the 2009 Prius. By looking at the online mechanic subscription, we expect to find these eight ECUs in the car. Now, when we ran our network map, we found a ninth ECU. At this point, we thought something was wrong, and what we, but, but what we did, we looked at the history of this car, and we actually found that when the university first bought this car, they converted it to an all-electric uh, car. And in the process of doing this, they added an, another ECU that was now transmitting onto the network. And we verified this by physically going into each ECU and tearing apart the car and unplugging it, and we found that there was a ninth device transmitting onto the network. So now, looking at the destination mapping for a 2017 Ford Focus, if you look at the, on, if you look at the uh, mechanic subscription for this vehicle, you'll see that there are certain functions that are supposed to operate between a subset of ECUs. For example, these four ECUs talk to each other for purposes of engine function. Now, with our destination map, we found that these messages were also being received by the radio ECU. Now, if you think back to that scenario I talked about, theoretically, if you had swapped out your after, this radio with an aftermarket, then someone could, could, could use that radio to enable the shutdown attack. And in fact, we found that both the Prius and the, and the Focus had no filter whatsoever on what messages an ECU could receive. So here are a few limitations um, that I'll discuss. Do I have time? OK. So, uh, so first, we have adversarial evasion. Um, we've been asked this a lot. We thought, well, an attacker could thwart our mapping, right? Or even the automaker could thwart our mapping, because they, they want to keep that information secret. So at this point, we would just rather use an intrusion detection system. If there is an active attack, an IDS would be the best solution. We are trying to perform, we're trying to do um, defenses against passive attacks. And people have also asked us, well, why doesn't the automaker intentionally alter the timing to defeat your mechanisms? Well, scheduling these messages for a vehicle in real time is already a challenging enough problem, so, that, so they have no incentive to alter the timing. And in the paper, we talk about how we avoid uh, permanent damage. And we, um, and we also talk about the method of resetting dash lights. Even as you're shutting off these ECUs, these ECUs are built to handle that in case a rat bites through the wires or in case there's some kind of electrical flaw. Because this is not a permanent fault, when you, uh, for most cases, when you simply turn off the car and turn it back on, the dash lights uh, disappear. Or if you drive around for a, few, for a little bit. Um, and these ECUs, uh, when they go into this mode where they can handle that failure, it's called limp home mode. Um, so these ECUs are designed for that. And in the case where, especially modern cars, they're starting to have multiple CAN buses. Um, in order to get access to these unexposed buses, we also talk about how you can gain access to these buses with minimal uh, tearing up of the car by going through the doors. So this is also another uh, message acceptance filter, is another way that you could define message reception. And in the paper, we talk about how this is a vendor-specific approach, and we give some ideas about how to achieve that. Um, but because we're trying to aim for a vehicle agnostic approach, we chose to define uh, message receive a different way. And finally, uh, by doing this isolation mechanism, we can actually detect non-transmitting ECUs. 
and we've talked to automakers, um, and they said that this would be a, a very potential use case for them for using our tool. So to conclude, the network inside cars is no longer static. We've seen three scenarios where that, where that can change. And we've built Canvas, a network mapper that'll tell you what's going on in your car. And we've seen that CAN makes the mapping problem um, challenging. And because due, due to the lack of source or destination information that you might see in other protocols, we saw that prior work did not achieve these goals um, when applied to the purpose to the context of network mapping. And we have a fast and inexpensive design with a focus on practicality. We have, we've seen two real, world, uh, two real world demonstrations um, in the security context, and we hope that uh, our tool Canvas can serve as a basis for future security applications. Thank you. Okay, I have a question to start, up, start us off. I was curious how you think we might communicate with vehicle owners about not installing untrusted devices or who you think should be uh, making sure that doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, could you repeat that again? Uh, or who you think, if it's not the vehicle owner, who we should be telling not to install untrusted devices, who might we talk to? So I would probably say the mechanic should have a process of verifying whether these, uh, this information is just secure um, or if you can like vet uh, potentially counterfeit ECUs as well. Um, that's also another issue that automakers have brought up with us. Um, but even if we could, so if uh, as a vehicle owner, if we can make this tool simple to use, then they could also use this as well. They can buy aftermarket parts, connect it, and check it. Um, especially as parts are now moving from mechanical to electronic. Um, and I would say 10, 20 years from now, the majority of uh, parts will be electronic. Great, thanks. So Justin Capos, NYU. I know a lot of uh, modern automakers are in increasingly segmenting their CAN networks and adding gateways that are also meant as security deterrents and things like that. I'm wondering if you can comment on um, if that trend continues, what that means for your work on Canvas. Sure, that's an excellent question. So um, in the paper, we, t we go into more detail, but uh, for, for gateways in particular, we, the gateways are connecting multiple CAN buses so as long as you can access each individual CAN bus and that there are no methods trying to thwart our mapping capabilities, then yes, Canvas can uh, last, last for the future. Great. Thanks. Let's yeah. thank the speaker. <laughs>